Welcome to this week's Legislative Update. I'm Jim Baumgart, your co-host, along with Nanette Bullabush from Elkhart Lake, and, and the other co host Yeah, the and a delight, delight for having her. Uh, and then we have a wonderful guest here, the uh, county clerk, uh, uh, John Dalton. And welcome, John. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, welcome to the program. Glad to be here. Uh, we were we had, uh, a week before we did a program, and we covered a lot of things about. Uh, um, elections and some of your duties and uh, um, we'd like to cover a little bit more but we'd like to get into the fall elections which we didn't cover mm -hmm. uh, in the last election but um, for those that were unavailable to watch the last program why don't you let the people know how long you've been around as a county clerk and uh, anything else you want to let them know about sure. yourself. Sure. Yeah. I've been county clerk since January of 2013, so I ran in 2012. It was the first time running for any public office. And then I won again uh, two falls ago, mm -hmm. or no, in fall of 16. Um, so it's a four-year term. Four-year term. Okay. So I'm one year into my second term. Okay. Well, welcome to the program. It welcome. used to be, for the, the citizens, it used to be two-year terms, uh, uh, sheriffs and everybody. but. Time flies in today's modern society, so they've moved a lot of them to four years. Or are they all four years now? The four year. Are there no two years left? Not at the county level. Okay, because not all of them switched over. I think the sheriff was the first one with four year terms, I think, and then pretty soon somebody else, and now they all have them. Yeah, those state statutes, they yeah. changed them. And your position is still an elected position. Correct. We know there elected are some position. who would like to see it appointed. But you told us earlier that it should be elected. Yeah, me too. And, yep. and you, I know Jim feels strong. And he is a county board supervisor. I have forefathers that that uh, wrote the state constitution. If it was important enough to be an elected position, then I don't think anything's changed. No, no. People have to have uh, confidence that there's somebody that will raise questions rather than uh, be a, 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 a hired person who is at the whim of, uh, uh, you know, the head of the county board or whatever it might be. Uh, there are people that can go and uh, list their concerns and somebody should be willing to listen yep. or the person doesn't have to vote for them. Right. You, know, you have to please your boss. And if yeah. you're hired by the chief administrator yeah. of a county, county you're executive or administrator. To that person. Yeah. I'm hired by the people. If they don't like what I'm doing, they elect someone else in. Yeah, they can and say, non keep them or yep. fire them. And it's nonpartisan, so you are here representing all of us, making sure we all have equal access to fair elections. My position is partisan, but my duties are nonpartisan. Yeah. And that's, that's pretty much spelled out in the statutes, too, Correct. I imagine. Yeah. Because yeah. okay. if you cross that line, you get. So, elections, spring and fall. Um, Spring elections tend to not be very uh, active, unfortunately, especially the primary in February. Um, but in spring, people will be electing local positions, <coughs> city, count, city, town, village, school board, county board. You will be reelected or not. If or not. Up, yeah. If you're running. <laughs> what is the most important thing people need to know about voting and elections? Um, it, it is turnout at the April election. And if there's going to be a primary, then it has to be the February election. Okay. But in my opinion, for what goes on in our daily lives, what affects us, our employers, our taxes, <clears throat> our pocketbook, when we're writing that uh, check at the end of the year for taxes, there's, you can get involved in that, and that is at the April election. Mm -hmm. That affects you. You're, it's your town board, your, your village, uh, your school district, your county, and there needs to be a greater turnout for that. So if, how do we do that? How do we get more people to vote? It, maybe social media. Maybe there has to be some more articles in the papers. Not everyone gets a subscription paper. Uh, there are weekly papers that are out there that could get the word out. But, and it's every, every April. Mm -hmm. It's not like the gubernatorial or the presidential every two <coughs> years. Every April, there are There's some ballot yeah. at some point at school district, town, village, city. They don't give you a break, do they, John? They don't. <laughs> so, so I, there's something, if, I, if I, my numbers are correct, there are over 70,000 adult people in Sheboygan County who could vote, who are old enough. They're over 18, they can vote. Mm -hmm. 
but somewhere around 20,000, 22,000 of those 70,000 are not even registered to vote. What is your office doing to encourage more people, to help people register to vote? When we, when we um, work with couples on marriage applications, because <coughs> our office does marriage applications, marriage licenses, uh, when they come in, they're asking, are you registered to vote? Do you have a passport? Do you ask them? Yeah. Good. So that actually you don't, generates... They, they don't get the marriage license if they don't <laughs> We don't do that. <laughs> but we don't... I knew that. All we have to do is, is guide them to their local municipality because we don't register voters. <clears throat> we do often see them back uh, for applying for passports yeah. because we do do that. Uh, but getting, getting people just interested... It's unfortunate that the fall elections, gubernatorial or presidential, it gets a greater turnout, mm -hmm. but some of those people only vote once in four year right. cycle. Yeah. Presidential one and, and as sometimes. You said, the local elections are so yeah. much so, are even more important. But those twenty thousand people, that really bothers me. That's those are voices that aren't even close to being heard. And they so, are now if they're listening. Yeah. But. I, uh, let's hope so. But I've got friends um, the, on the League of Women Voters, and there's a, an, an, an amazing group called the Plymouth Neighborhood Action Team. They're going door to door. These are grassroots people go, going door to door, <coughs> encouraging people to register to vote. Do you support those grassroots efforts? Sure. Good. So, so you're willing sure. to work with them if they want to ask for help with statistics or information or literature? Mm -hmm. Because uh, we had one, uh, I think the league was in St. Vincent de Paul a couple of weeks ago. As people walk in to get Christmas things and clothes or food banks, that would seem to me that's a perfect way to get people to register to vote and to learn about how to do it. Sure. Anything else we can do to simplify it? it like same day, well, we do have same day we registration. We have same day registration. But you <coughs> said you oppose it. Why? Uh, because that's where the lines are on election day. If there's any backup, it's going to be at the registration table for same day registrants. So if you're going to vote, if you're going to take the time and research what you're going to be voting on, a school referendum, a village referendum, if you're going to be voting on whether your taxes are going to go up for whatever it is on the ballot, you should be getting involved a little before the day of the election. But if there's so, not that but we have that same day registration. Right. If there is automatic registration, possibly with your driver's, your driver's license, license that still doesn't get people educated on what's going to be on no, the ballot and get them to the ballot. But if, mm -hmm. if you don't allow them to be in line to register on the day of voting, uh, then that line disappears, but that line may disappear completely from the voting process, or most exactly. of them. Or couldn't we invest more resources so that there are more people <coughs> at those tables taking more names? Yeah, that I think over like the years, though, I think just less and less people are caring, unfortunately, to, yeah. to get out and vote. But if we know those lines are there, then we can be ready for them with more yeah. people to yeah. help them. Would yeah. you support um, a national holiday so that people Ooh. who are working that's don't heavy. have to get on a bus? Yeah. Well, that's I think that's... A lot of people some, call for that. I don't, Most don't many countries so. do that. Don't some countries actually they require it? They may. Like Australia yeah. requires I don't it. think so. Being that the polls open for 13 hours <coughs> uh, and you can absentee vote, yeah. okay. uh, I think everyone's covered. You, 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 you see Florida, when, when they have these big lines that are five hours long, um, they're not doing something right where we don't have those lines I don't think in Wisconsin do we I haven't seen lines like that of course I mean Milwaukee will get Milwaukee some. Green Bay <coughs> Madison will get some, some lines, lines but uh, but not like what you see on the television yeah. maybe their state laws have it so their uh, j districts have more population oh maybe I don't know and less less uh, voting uh, places do maybe. you support efforts to, s to just make it to simplify I, I did hear from a friend who tries to vote in her own town a Sheboygan County Township, and of course they have their own municipal rules, but she said it was pretty complicated. She tried to talk to the clerk and they referred it to the treasurer who didn't know anything, and then nobody answered her calls. And I know that you're not responsible for every municipality, but are there efforts in your office to at least streamline these processes and make sure all municipal officials are informed on these? That, that comes on the election side, that comes from the election commission. So I'm not, and they're going and uh, direct to the municipalities <coughs> with education uh, requirements. Mm -hmm. Clerks are required to keep so many 
hours per their two So you don't have period. county uh, uh, gatherings of uh, village town officials on elections? That's not a county? I, I perform chief inspector training. So I, I perform election training for poll workers. Okay. Some of all the polls? Of, of all of them. Okay. Yep. And sometimes the clerks participate in that, <clears throat> but often it's just the poll workers. Because okay. on election day, it's the chief inspector that runs the polls and not the municipal clerk. Okay. And I have to ask, because it's 2017 and people are talking about um, Russia, actually it's 2018 when people are watching this, what are you doing to make sure that our elections are not hacked, that they're fair and equitable and not tampered with? Partially, uh, there aren't too many counties in the state that do it, but I do the programming for all the municipalities. But so programming, you mean? The all the programming for uh, the memory devices on election day for all of the election equipment. So, um, and nothing is uh, networked with our county offices, which our IT department doesn't like for pushing out updates and whatnot. And nothing is tied to the internet. So there's, and we don't have any modems. So there's no internet connectivity wirelessly. So, there's there's no way to hack our system that we know of that, we've that we know of right okay. uh, you know that so we're um, working on it this yeah thing. but there's, so there's no internet connectivity okay. uh, hardwired or wireless so not sure how yeah. that can happen but it's that's checked at the results are checked on election night that all goes back to my office a week later we have a county board of canvas we double check everything we submit all of that to the state and the state certifies the elections for state and above. Okay. It can be uh, smooth and it can be a little complicated, but depending on the turnout, does that make a difference? No, the turnout <coughs> is just a larger number of who came out to the ballot, so it's just a bigger number. Okay. The April election, the spring cycle is actually crazy, and uh, there, there can be, for an example, 110 different ballots in April, ballot styles okay. and there might only be 20 in the fall because everyone has the same ballot basically presidential the uh, u.s senate and right villages down. will have different ballots because and... out in the county county supervisory district yeah. will be split by a school district oh that's oh. right so you'll have district 25 mm -hmm. in this school district right. district 25 in that school district and and it gets cut up the uh, village of Glen or town of Greenbush may have six or seven different ballot styles. Is that right? For a little Greenbush. Wow. They'll have because of the school district and county supervisory districts. So we're running out of time. People say there is someone watching this who <clears throat> wants to know how to vote, make sure they've got all the documentation they need now because the laws have changed in the last five or six years. What's the most, where do they go for that information? What's but the, before we can get into that, uh, John, we are running out of time, so they have to call John. Okay, just call me for right? information or, on how to vote. Go to myvote. Myvote. Myvote.wi.gov. Uh, or call 920-459-9003. All right. And we'll remember. Thank you for all you do, John. <laughs> thank You're you welcome. very much. Thank you for having me. And thank you for coming. This has been Legislative Update. Uh, see you next week. Good. Okay. What's the